This is the voice of the report of the week. Signing on. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. We are present tonight. It is a Sunday, soon to be Monday. Uh, well, this show was uh, recorded in bits and pieces. I will not lie to you. Uh, right now, it's uh, well. Right, well, what? What good this does? Looking at the clock, and it's in a uh, universal time. Twenty-three oh three UTC. So it's a little bit after seven, Eastern time. Uh, but here we are. Here we are. It's a uh, you know it's a Sunday, late Sunday, soon to be Monday. Though I recorded part of this show uh, early on a Sunday last night. Well, I read the fan mail and what have you, but uh, then I was out of time and I, I was too tired, so I couldn't record the rest of it. So um. Something I normally don't do. It's just something that happens from time to time. We're managing, though. We're uh, we're getting things taken care of, though. So I mean, it's you know, it's manageable. Uh, but here I sit. I'm actually in a, a different recording area right now. I told you I got two rooms where I sometimes record these shows. One of them, my usual domain. Uh, you know, that being the one you know upstairs in a. Whatever you want to call it, the reviewing room, the computer room, the radio room, the dining room, whatever you want to call it, my base of operations. And then there's a second one which uh, you've never seen. You have no idea what this room looks like, but uh, it's secluded. It's pretty quiet, comfortable. Uh, no one even uses the room, so it's all mine. So I sometimes the only the only reason this room is even used here is. Uh, when I come down here to record every now and then, but uh, other than that, it's, it's never used. So, uh, you know, here I am. So, yeah, I just had a had a little dinner, had another bubbly pizza, and I was listening to the shortwave. That one crazy screaming guy was uh, actually still is on. I don't know what that noise is that he makes. But yeah, something I listen to every Sunday, usually from seven to seven thirty. This is the Full Gospel Hour radio broadcast. Thank you for tuning in. That's so he starts it off, and uh, then it's just uh, you can't understand it from there on. Yeah, and that's how it goes. That's sad. So, anyways, though, um, you know, there we go. So, what did I do today? I didn't do that much. Really, didn't do much at all. I, uh, you know, woke up after a three hours sleep. I was so tired, I collapsed, and then I woke up in the morning. Did what needed to be do. I actually ventured out today. Yeah, that's something. Went out to the store and uh, I bought myself a few pieces of, a few pizzas. Two for review, one for pleasure, enough to get me through the week. Now, hopefully you're listening to this. And I'm, I'm directly addressing one, one person. I hope you're listening to this. But, you've been a long time listener, and you requested I review Elio's, Elio's Pizza. Well, I got him. And I was actually thinking, you know... This guy, he wanted me to review them, so I'm going to do them. I'm going to do those pizzas, going to review them, see how they are. So, you'll see a review of that, and let it be known you are responsible for it. You have directly influenced this channel's history and fate. Be proud, my friend, be proud. Yes, yes. Um, other than that, though, we got an Elio's pepperoni pizza. We got a Newman's Own pepperoni pizza. I got a freshetta rising crust, that's just for my enjoyment. And I got a freshetta brick oven, but I got that in a separate store, so it really doesn't count, you know. So that's that. So I got enough. Also in the freezer lays a tombstone everything pizza. I guess it's a supreme pizza, if they want to call it that. Same thing though. 
Right on, yeah. Supreme Pizza. And, uh, you know, we'll delve into that also for review. So we got enough to carry us through the week. Um, I hope to get my hands on a few items. Number one, I want to get my hands on this uh, stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. I think it's got bacon and, and something in it. Watch for that. Number two, I want to redeem myself and get that Gouda chicken on broche from Wendy's. I want to get that. And then, I want to try those Lay's, those Lay's chips. I guess I should be thankful, though, that I, I have plans on stuff to review, right? I should be glad for that. <sighs> Six minutes in. Otherwise, today I didn't do much. Uh, I only tried to stay up. Tried to stay up, but I couldn't. Fell right back asleep. Uh, after I made my run to the store, crashed out on the couch, and got another about uh, four hours of sleep. I was watching the NASCAR truck race. It took, as some call them, I was watching a NASCAR truck race, and, uh, you know, it was something. I'm more of a fan of the NASCAR Sprint Cup, so the actual cars, but the trucks are alright to watch, you know. All right, not really trucks. They're they're just race cars with the body of a truck. So it's you know something. They were racing in Canada, the Great White North. Uh, that was nice. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm just sitting here now. I already uh, what did I already do? I already recorded the fan mail reading, so that came out to be about 30 minutes, right? With this reading, it's probably going to be about uh, 10 minutes, so 40 minutes, and then we got 20 more minutes, so I don't know what we're going to do. I guess we'll find something to talk about, right? And we will. And we will. Usually at this time, actually, from 7 to 8, I usually just spend it with the shortwave here. So I have it. There's this other weird station I call the farm animal station because it's just a bunch of people that are I, I think it's a religious program but all they're doing is just like moaning like zombies pretty much <laughs> that's another thing uh, that's another station that broadcasts at this time <laughs> but people are willing to pay for it and keep it on the air, so I mean that's something. But uh yeah, there you go. Yep. Slow day. Slow day for me. Wonder if it was a slow day for you or not, I don't know. Um either way though, time passes, time progresses. Soon to be the first of September. So, September will be coming in. We must welcome it in. Sure, nobody likes September. September is usually the least favorite month of, by everyone. Um, no, but we gotta welcome it in anyways. Speaking of something coming in, I can see out the window here a line of dark clouds coming in. The sky is darkening over. That means storms, thunderstorms are coming in. Nothing you can do about that. Nothing you can do about September coming in. Or you can't do anything about time. So you just gotta let it happen. Uh, yes, well, what can we do? Fall is approaching, summer is exiting. Then will be winter, then spring, and then summer once more. So isn't that something? Oh well. Here I sit, nothing to say, so let's read some fan mail. So let's check out the fan mail for today, okay? Let's uh, scroll down, let's see where we were here. Right. We don't have too much, so uh... Hey, 
Heard you like The Walking Dead. If you watched any of these shows, they are my personal recommendations. He listed Breaking Bad, Boardwalk Empire, Game of Thrones, House MD, and Mad Men. Uh, no, 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 no. I have watched Mad Men uh, from time to time. But uh, I know, I, I've heard very good things about all the shows. I'm just not a big, you know, TV guy. I don't watch TV, you know, in, in copious periods of time, right? And copious amounts of hours. Uh, but thank you for the recommendations. I've heard good things about all of those shows, so definitely look at it. Uh, if you're curious, The Walking Dead is coming back. It's coming back early October. So you could expect, I don't know what I'll do, I think we'll continue the VORWs as usual. I don't know if I'll do my analysis of the episode as a separate show, or stick it in it, in the uh, VORW that is. <laughs> but we'll do something. We'll figure something out, don't worry there. We'll get an analysis of uh, Walking Dead episodes, maybe as a separate show, you know. Keep it short, though, maybe like 15, 20 minutes, nothing too big. Because, you know, people, any average Joe doesn't want to sit there for, you know, an hour listening to me talking about the, uh, the Walking Dead episode. We'll do something. Hello, Mr. Review Bro. I have recently began watching your videos recently. I've been watching many of your videos. Occasionally, you touch down on the topic of your trolls. I find it sickening on what people say. I know how hard it can be to deal with people. Stay strong, my friend. On a lighter note, I have a question for the show. You interested me with shortwave radio. I went on the website but found it hard to navigate. Any tips for a newcomer? What I recommend doing, I actually did a, uh, well, you might have seen this. You could let me know. You could send me another message. Doesn't really bother me. I did, I'd say, many, many months, many months back you know so this could easily be lost in the you know the slew of you know videos and reviews and VORWs of days past I did a few lectures about shortwave radio and um I actually showed how to use the whole site and everything uh so just look back and uh, you'll find them you know so if you ever want anything to do you could watch them and familiarize yourself and and all that continuing Cheetos or cheese puffs? Floyd Mayweather can't read. Much respect. All right. um, yeah, Cheetos for me. I'm not a big fan of either. I haven't had any in a, a very long time. But, um, yeah, Cheetos for me. The Cheetos. Dear Report of the Week, and if you're hearing that, that noise in the background that sounds like machinery or whatever, like a lawnmower kind of, that's um, one of the fans on my computer, there's dust in it, so I gotta get the uh, compressed air and clear that out, but um, you know, oh well. Dear Report of the Week, mm -hmm. I think it'd be cool to see you skateboarding around the city in a suit with a stack of- oh, this guy gave me um, Gave me some fan art here. Uh, and to answer your first question, yes. First question was uh, private. He gave me some fan art. There I am in a suit and tie on a skateboard with a stack of pizzas. So that'll be the uh, fan art for this show. Thank you for your submission. I just found out about your channel. Let me tell you, it's always nice to see a man so fond of food as you are. Your views are very informative and accurate. You look so dapper to boot. Congratulations on your channel, and please keep being hungry. And I definitely will. I plan on keep keep keeping this up for decades to come. Or well, for as long as possible, right? Until all the energy drinks and fast food get to me, I'll still be here for all that I know. Uh, doing reviews and lectures to boot. Citations, report of the week. I'm a fan of your videos and I really dig your style and your old-fashioned charm, both of which seem like a rarity in today's culture. 
Anyway, I wanted to let you know if you are a fan of the films of David Lynch. Twin Peaks, in particular, seems like something you'd enjoy. You remind me a lot of Special Agent Dale Cooper, who is one of the show's protagonists. Take care, and always remember to stay positive. Thank you. I'll have to check that out. I definitely will. Another film that's uh, going around nowadays. Um, you know, I'm just going to see it just for the, the heck of it. Not now, of course, and when things quiet down. Um, it's called As Above, So Below. I mean, it doesn't look like anything special, but still, I think, if anything, the concept, it's about, um, it's supposed to be, you know, a classic, oh, scary movie. Um, you know, about, I guess, this team of, uh, <laughs> I suppose, professionals, so they look nothing like professionals. Uh, we're investigating these, uh, catacombs underneath Paris, which actually do exist, and, uh, it's kind of cool to read about them. And apparently they, uh, they enter the gates of hell or something and all this stuff starts happening. You know, it's just a classic scare movie. I mean, nothing too, too big about it. But, um, you know, I just want, I just want to see it just to, uh, if anything, for the whole reason for the, uh, you know, the catacombs and, and see how they did that and you know, all that. Uh, so I think that would be kind of cool. You know, really, if you're wondering how I react with horror movies, sometimes I like to show, you know, some horror movie, I, especially, I think, um, if you remember back in 09, or was it 2010, a while ago, the movie Paranormal Activity, right? I remember all the hype about it. They were saying, oh my god, oh my god, this is the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and, uh, I remember, like, uh, they would show, like, uh, some, some films of, like, the advanced screening, right? And all the people sitting there in the audience in the movie theater. And, uh, I don't know, something happens, and they literally jump out of their seats, and they're screaming and panicking, and it looks like someone's having a, a seizure, and no one's having a heart attack. And they made it seem like it was the scariest movie ever, right? So then, years later, I saw it. Um, yeah, of course, I was a bit late to the party, but I saw it. And I thought, what the heck am I watching here? You know, it wasn't even, I don't know, it wasn't even scary at all. Apparently, the climax of the film... Was supposed to be when some ghost or something was flying around, and uh, I don't know. It didn't even. It was kind of, uh, I don't know. Ugh, you tell me. The premise of the film, Paranormal Activity, in my opinion, was uh, to scare people who uh, sleep at night. And because I sleep during the day, it kind of had no effect on me. So, you know, there goes that. But yeah, I want to see that movie as above, so below. Um, you know, so I mean, one day I will. Apparently it has some YouTube star in it. No, I'm not in it. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm, I don't even know the guy's name or something. Um, yes, it doesn't really, I don't care about that. Continuing on. As a fellow depression sufferer, I'd like you to know that I am always here. I understand that you do not know me, based if you bro. But if you want or need anyone to talk to to lift your spirits, hopefully, I'm always here. Stay strong and don't stop. Lift the good videos. One thing you should never do is shut down your channel. You have made such an impact on many people with your VORW shows and reviews. Look at your sub count. These people care about you. I completely understand what it's like to be in your position. You have 19,000... Plus, people's support. Don't quit. And I won't. I'll stay here for as long as... As long as my little heart... Right? Continues beating. Hello, friend. Love the channel. Just a couple of questions about your depression. Oh, boy, that seems to be the big topic tonight. Have you told anyone? Yep. They think it might be... Do you think it might be better one day... Or have you accepted that it is something you have to live with for the rest of your life? You know, I try to be optimistic. I try to think, you know, there's brighter days ahead. Um, you know. The thing is, though, is that most of the time, things get worse, right, before they get any better. Um, so that's usually how it goes. Things get bad, and they get good, and they stay good for a while. That crashes down. Um, but it's something I could, you know deal with, something I could manage with, you know. Um, yeah, it gets tough. Yeah, I lose, you know, interest in some things. Yeah, I sometimes doubt myself and this and that and the other thing that, um, 
we're all too familiar with, but you know. We continue on, we keep going. Nothing more to it. Um, so, I mean, one day, one day it might pass, but that's assuming, you know, everything goes well, right? Everything stays on the right track. See, the thing about life, the thing about life, is that, well, throws anything at you. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Oh, yeah, you could predict it. And, yeah, most of the time you're right. You know, you have a plan, you have a schedule, you stick to it, everything works out fine. Most of the time that happens. But some days, and maybe it's only just 1% or 2% of days, something else happens. Life throws you a curveball. Didn't even see it coming. You could be the most prepared person in the world. You didn't see it coming. And it knocks you off your feet. Knocks you down to the ground. Then what? You could do one or two things. You could lay there. Or you could brush the dust off and stand back up. So, it's a good one, I guess, metaphor, if you will, uh, of it. But, you know, that's, that's the truth. So, assuming all goes well, yeah, it'll pass one day. Huh? You never know what can happen. And, uh, you know, that's just life. Something you got to accept. Something you got to realize. That life, while well, most of the time, is on your side, sometimes it isn't. Just, uh, it's just something. We've only got one, two, three, f I think only four more letters. A little bit of a slow night, but, um, that's fine. That means, uh, I was able to get that little lecture of mine in there, so, uh, I can maybe even get another one in. <laughs> Continue on. This is a sensitive question, but, you know what, we'll give, uh, we'll give both sides of the argument, okay? This person asks, how do you feel about girls walking around in skin-tight leggings and yoga pants? Now, why, uh, it's, it's a clothing about, it's a question about clothing. What's, what's so controversial about that? Because there's, literally, people put up a fight with either answer I could give. I could say one. I think it is disgraceful. Disgraceful, is that a word? No, disgraceful. You know, it's disgraceful. All it does is sexualize people, you know, this and that, and it's indecent, blah, blah, blah. And people could say, how dare you tell me, you know, what to wear and what I can't, you know, you go to hell, this and that, and don't tell me what to do. And I can understand that logic. That would be someone saying to me, why does this guy wear suits, blah, 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 he shouldn't wear suits anymore because he looks like this or that, and he should, he should update his wardrobe and, you know, stop wearing the suits and this and that. So I could, I could understand the rationale behind that. Maybe not the hostility, but I could understand the reasoning, right? That's answer one. Answer two, you could say to that, is, you know what? They can wear what they want to wear. It's their life, not mine. Their parent. Heck, I'm not even female, you know. So it's their life. They could wear what they want to wear. They could do what they want to do. I don't care. And then people might say, "Well, how on earth could you support, you know, this degenerating style of clothing? How could you, you how could you approve of this, this and that?" And that's another uh, mindset. So either way, whichever way you're going to look at it. You're going to get blasted from someone, somewhere. And you might say, oh, well, anything could happen with that. You know, it could happen with any decision. Yes, I know, but this is a more <laughs> controversial one. Uh, which I'm not, I'm not willing to, to risk entering into the deep end of the pool. Right? Pool's closed. But, um, yeah, that's why. So, I mean, I figure, you know, wear what you want to wear, do what you want to do. I'm not the boss of you, I'm not the boss of your life. So, you make the choices, you deal with the repercussions, you know. I'm just here to talk and offer, on occasion, advice um, that could be taken or not, right? I mean, you certainly, if you choose on wearing that, you're not going to stand out at all. 
That's for sure. They're mainstream, so. Hello. If you're interested in old radio shows, you should check out Lights Out. You can find episodes on YouTube. There's a great site called Relic Radio that has other great horror and suspense radio shows. I find it fun to lay on my bed, turn down the lights, and listen to a show. The commercial breaks compelling the listener to send their kitchen grease and munition factories are also fun. Also, I'm interested in getting into the Twilight Zone, but I don't know where to start. Should I watch episode one, or is there a classic episode that gives me an idea uh, of the show at its best? Any other shows you'd recommend, except for Wipeout, which I hate. Oh, don't say that about Wipeout. I was watching it last night. I'm going to watch it again tonight, and tomorrow night, and every single night in September. I always watch Wipeout. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not hating on you, brother. Uh, but Wipeout is <laughs> a favorite show of mine, uh, and it truly is. I enjoy it, I enjoy watching it. Why? I don't know, but I always like the premise of the show. I like the uh, beautiful commentary from Mr. John Henson and John Anderson, and uh, even the commentary from the host. Um, I, don't know, I just think it's, uh, I think it's good. I like it a lot. Uh, but I watch it every single, I guess it's sound of, nah, late night, I guess. From 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. on True TV. So that's uh, usually something I do before I go to sleep. You know, I get off the computer at uh, 4 a.m. sharp most of the time. Because I don't want to waste my life on the computer. I mean, I waste enough time on it anyways. So I get off the computer at, you know, 4 a.m. Then I head into the, I, guess, I call it the TV room. A lot of people call it the den Right, but um, or the man cave, but really it's it's the television room, the TV room. So I go in there, turn on the tube, and uh, watch True TV for an hour. Watch some good old Wipeout. Then after that, I'll just watch anything. Lately, I've been watching some. Uh, I've been going over to Fuse. Uh, I'm watching their program called All Nighter, which they play the hottest and latest music videos. Uh, and I, I begin to realize how terrible music is nowadays, the mainstream music at least. <sighs> what video are they playing constantly, pretty much? That song, um, oh, what is it? All about that bass, right? I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no travel. Uh, that one. <sighs> so, you know, seems to be played at least three times within the hour. You know, and then usually after every music video, there's a five-minute commercial break, which is kind of, I don't know, not approve of it. But um, that's that. Oh well. So that's that. At least I heard some good news. Found out that uh, Radio Disney. I didn't even know that they had radio stations. Radio Disney, which broadcasts on the AM dial, the AM band. You know, when your car, you could turn on AM or FM radio. On AM, the station usually called Radio Disney, broadcasts out of the major cities and could usually cover the entire uh, entirety of the U.S. and most of North America. They're shutting down all their stations, every last one of them. So finally, that crappy pop music is getting off the, the airwaves, at least on one other station. But, um, they're selling all the stations, and I thought to myself, you know, if I had the money, if I had the money without hesitation, I'd buy the New York station, which, uh, has a very powerful transmitter, especially for AM. 50,000 watts of power, which is a good amount. Um, and could be heard as far west as, uh, I think Chicago, they said, and uh, as far north as Ottawa, Canada. So good coverage. If I had the money, I'd buy it. And then you could hear these programs from your car, but that's not happening. Cause let's 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 think realistically. I don't got the money. So there goes that. But one day, one day, we'll see.
Oh yeah, and by the way, if Twilight Zone, start from episode one. Uh, I've been watching the whole Twilight Zone series, the original ones. I'm not, none of that 80s remake or anything. It's terrible. Start with the original Twilight Zone episodes from, I think, 1959 or 58. Start with that and stick with them. All right. Uh, just start with episode one. Just start working your way through. You'll clear out season one, then season two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, I usually watch an episode. I usually watch between one or two episodes of Twilight Zone every Sunday. Uh, and I've been doing that since January of 2013. So clearly, I've been watching a lot of it. Um, right now, what's interesting is that I'm watching episodes that have almost never before been seen. Okay, I forget the season number. It is. I have to double check here. But Twilight Zone, I'm sure you're familiar, they broadcast in the half hour episodes, right? But did you know there's actually a season of uh, quite a few episodes that are actually a full hour in length? Almost never seen on TV, but um, I've been watching them now. So I think I have one or two of those left. And then it's back to the half hour episodes. But yeah, just start from the beginning, work your way up. One thing that I will say about a few of the early episodes that uh, annoyed me was that a few of them they used you know for the time sure it was black and white cameras but they still used the best you know film available uh, that looked good but on occasion they would switch to videotape and I guess for cost measures and you'll notice a difference in quality immediately and uh, I'll say this to, to say the least I don't like it and it distracted me throughout the entire episode but there's only like two or three that are like that but um, if you get past that, all the episodes are fine. Hello, John. I must say, I do appreciate the timing of your VORWs. I'm on the West Coast and work for Amazon.com, so my hours are approximately 11 to 3 a.m. Or 8 p.m. to midnight your time. Hey, those are some good hours, I'll tell you that. Those are some awesome hours. <laughs> So, by the time you post your videos, I get home, I'm looking for a relaxer from my sometimes stressful job. Yeah, I feel you. Additionally, I have a question. How do you fund your amazing wardrobe? With my cash. Because, you know, I have some money. Uh, and I usually get enough after I sometimes continuously update my wardrobe. Though it's actually... not updating it with new clothing, older clothing, so I guess you'd call that, get ready for this, it's updating, like de-updating, <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, I mean, here, here's the thing, though, for instance, I was saying last, uh, last show, right, I had this blazer that was worth literally about you know, 400 bucks, because it was brand new, stylish, slim fit, extra tight, and disgusting, uncomfortable, hideous, but perceived by the public, it was a, a beautiful garment, right? Heck, it could have been gold-plated for all I care. You couldn't tell the difference, right? Um, so I was able to sell that. I didn't, I didn't want it. I, I wore it a few times. I realized, no, I looked, I think, right? You might say, oh my gosh, you look so beautiful, right? Um, but I felt, after seeing myself in it, I thought, oh my gosh, this looks absolutely terrible. It's not the style I'm going for. So I was able to get a full refund. With that $400, I was able to buy older style suits, which were cheap. Uh, because no one likes the style of them anymore, apparently, you know? If you look back to the early, if you, if you really want to know my style of suits in a nutshell, just look back to the, the suits that men wore. Right in the 90s and early 2000s. And there you go. So with 500 bucks, I could buy a great deal of clothing, enough to keep me going. And this gentleman says, "Can you review the bacon cheese stuffed crust from Pizza Hut?" <sighs> hey, guess what? You know, I went for lunch today. You guessed it, Pizza Hut. Guess what? I didn't order that. Looks like I had no idea. 
called in the order. Had no idea of this new pizza of theirs. So I got a normal Cheesy Bites pizza. There you go. So uh, probably not next week, but the week after that. Um, Cause I like to rotate every other week, usually, when it comes to uh, pizzas. So, you know, probably two weeks from now, I'll be able to review that pizza from Pizza Hut. Dear Board of the Week, I'd like to know your opinion, if you have one, on the Imperial versus the metric systems. I would naturally say metric as I live in the UK, but I would like to know your thoughts on the matter. Well, in the US here, you know, we use the imperial system. Don't ask me why, we should be using the metric system, since the rest of the world uses it. Um, you know, so I mean, really, I try to, you know, for instance, I talk about this guy a lot, but it's a worthy comparison. My acquaintance in Canada, for instance, they use the metric system. <clears throat> so, whenever I'm talking about temperatures, for instance, I like to sometimes discuss the weather. I'm always sure, when I'm talking to him, I convert the temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Uh, because it's a lot easier than saying, oh yeah, the temperature was 90 today, and 90 Celsius, <laughs> well, chances are I would either be very, very uncomfortable, or you'd be dead. Or at least close to it. Right. So I always trans, uh, transfer it. I think 90 is, um, what is it, 33 Celsius? I don't know. 33? That's 91, but 32. Right? No, 33, that's the closest. Yeah, so, um, I mean, yeah, 90 Celsius. That'll be 194 Fahrenheit. Uh, that's, that's absolutely horrible. But, uh, yeah, personally, I mean, it would be nice to, to fully convert to the metric system, but when the rest, of the rest of the population is using another one, well, what can you do then, you know? He says, also, if you could, uh, wish my good friend Jarrett Uzel your best regards, as he is not feeling the best right now, that'd be greatly appreciated. Absolutely, you have a big shout-out, Jarrett. From the report of the week, hope you're feeling better. I wish you all the very best. Take care. Let me just see. Uh, you know, we got a couple in the filtered section. If you're wondering what I mean when I say filtered messages, I uh, added a list of um, code words, right? I, I, I have a list of code words that... Uh, I guess you could say. Yeah, here they are. It's called blacklist. Comments closely matching these words will be held for review. So any comments with the word autistic, autism, autist, the word comments, enable. Uh, if there's any message of any sort with any of those words in there, that immediately goes into the filtered section. So I could look it over and uh, either accept it or ban the user. So sometimes, you know, some messages get in there by accident and, uh, you know, don't worry about it. Hey, I've just started watching your videos and I need to say that I'm sorry if you've, shut, if you've had to shut off comments if it were because of idiots. And I look forward to watching all of your videos and your new ones. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. And yeah, it was because of, of unruly miscreants, if you want to call it that. And finally, last but not least. Well, it is like, well, no, it's not least. It never is. Dear Report of the Week, Forgive the length of this message, but I was wondering if you could shed light on what I refer to as Report of the Week phenomenon. This is the effect you have on me and several other listeners I have introduced to your show. You all get irrationally excited about your next upload, and when we talk about you, we consider you a friend, even though we have never met you. I mean, you're actually a hugely significant part of our lives. I wonder if others have suffered the same affliction from your channel. 
Maybe it's just the water here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think it's affected more people than you think. Just no one's willing to admit it. Until now, of course. Now it's going to become a, a massive public outcry of people saying, yeah, same thing here, man. Yeah, this and that and all the other thing. I would sometimes refer to this channel as a disease. Um, you know, both uh, uh, sarcastically and truthfully. <laughs> it depends, I guess, on the mood, right? I'm feeling about this channel. But, um... I, I sometimes call it a disease, not in a negative way, but because it, it grows onto you, right? And you become affected by it. Uh, I really didn't want to call it like an illicit drug, right? Where you become addicted to it. But, you know, it's an interesting thing. Um, it's never happened to me. It never has. Maybe it's because I'm the cause, but, um,. Yeah, no, surely, surely. I'm sure it's happened to at least probably a couple hundred, if not several thousand other people. Uh, so do not fear. Do not worry. It's not going to spread, though. It's not, it's, it doesn't spread like Ebola or anything. The only way you could catch it is by watching enough of my videos for a prolonged period of time. But remember, there is still hope for you, my friend. There still is. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Crawl toward the light. Secondly, he says, it seems odd that trolls will call you autistic. You have said before, you would continue your channel even if it makes just one person happy. This shows a wonderful amount of empathy for your fellow man and eagerness to please the world. This is the complete opposite of autism. As a psychology major, trolls interest me. Their motivations almost always seem to stem from sexual frustration and inability to live in the real world. Their lives are empty and unsatisfying. This is why they resort to such petty and childish bullying. You should pity them, really, and not let their world influence how you run your channel or life. I know 4chan is basically an army, but don't forget that this army is mostly made up of, of such pathetic individuals. By living your life, You've already beat them. Well, that's my five cents anyways. Adios. Well, thank you for your words. And that said, that concludes today's fan mail reading. We got 20 minutes to kill. Yeah, we do. Wow. Yeah, we do. So, uh, what are we going to talk about? Alright, so it's, uh, it's still Sunday. Just finished with the fan mail reading. I'm back here. It's the same time that I'm recording the uh, intro. So, uh, you know what I found interesting about the fan mail? The topic, it seemed, and I was looking through a couple new letters that I got today, which of course I can't read on the air because, well, I already did it. I already recorded my segment. So, what was interesting is that the subject of many letters lately has been depression. Now, I don't know if this is because it's just circumstance, or if it's because of the, you know, that uh, celebrity who, who killed himself, or, or what. But, um, that seems to be a popular, popular topic of, of letters uh, nowadays. Oh, well, no. I'm not going to tell you to stop sending them. We just got to carry on, keep going, right? Nothing more you can do about that. So that's that. <sighs> yeah, the sky is really darkening over. Some really black clouds are coming in. I don't think it's looking that likely that I'll be taking a walk tonight, that's for sure, so. Oh well. Oh well. That's that. Alright. So I'll be staying in tonight. I think I'm gonna, I might film something. I might. What might I film? I don't know. Maybe, um, well, I don't know necessarily an energy drink review. I actually did film a couple energy drink reviews recently. Um, but I still got a lot of those to do, so I might film an energy drink review. I don't know if I really, you know, want to do a food review tonight. I, mean, I could. 
keep in mind I still have things to review besides frozen pizzas food wise um, I have a few pigs in a blanket that I also want to review so keep that in mind either way we'll get something out we'll keep producing the content we have a, a mighty fine backlog of videos here um, so you got the videos don't you worry they'll be continuously uploaded but um you know with that being said well I'm trying to think of something to say and I've got nothing to say I actually have a um well a brief lecture which I recorded last night but I don't know if I'm gonna put it up in this show or not um you know so I'll, I'll think on it it's called I entitled it putting an exclamation point on life and I might at least play a short segment of that to close off this show Either way, though, with nothing else to say, I end this show. Thank you for listening. Hello. You are listening to VORW in the voice of the Report of the Week. And this is the Report of the Week here, of course. In this brief little lecture of mine, entitled, Putting an Exclamation Point on Life, I discuss living life to the fullest. Now, I know I have said this time and time again in shows past. <laughs> At this rate, I've probably said it nearly every other show, if not every show, at some point in the hour which I ramble on. Well, I will say, live life to the fullest. Live every day as though it is your last. Surely, this is at least somewhat logical advice. Impossible, no. But improbable, well, to a degree, yes. Many people, including myself, so understand that while I say this, I too am at fault here. That when you hear, live life to the fullest, live every day as though it is your last, you might hear it and you might think, this is excellent advice. But then you brush it off and you, know, you continue on doing whatever you're doing. No change. With that being said, Living life to the fullest is a statement that can be really, you know, it could be taken, it could be percepted many different ways. I understand that. When you say live life to the fullest, what does that mean exactly? Really, what does it mean? It can mean a number of things. And yes, there are numerous definitions to it. But I stick to one, and one only. When I say live life to the fullest, I don't mean go skydiving every day, or become a hardened criminal and do whatever you want because oh you might die tomorrow right I'm not saying well if you want to live life to the fullest then how about you become president of the United States and try to make the world a better place or how about you try to become a scientist and you know create a cure for cancer I'm not saying do that All right. surely there are some who would say yes but for me saying that and using that definition is not only illogical, really. Uh, but it, al it is also very impractical. Right. When I say live life to the fullest, I mean small things, simple things, day-by-day -day activities. You don't even have to change your routine for anything. Really, you don't. Nothing at all. The reason why I stand here behind the microphone uh, for this special, hopefully short, lecture it's because I had an experience last week. That, it was certainly not life-changing, but it made me think about something. And it made me think, you truly don't know or realize how important and how meaningful something is to you until it is no longer there. Take a minute to think about that. You really don't realize how important something is and how meaningful something is to you until it's no longer there, until it is gone. And I learned that the hard way last week. Now, we won't get into detail because it's a broad example and it could literally be used for anything. But we will provide a few examples. 
Think of, for instance, just your daily routine. Think about how much time in your just regular day the computer, the internet, takes up. For some people, it could take only maybe just four hours. For others, it could be in excess of 12. Now let's remove that from life. The internet isn't around anymore. Surely, the deprivation thereof will have an effect. And chances are, for many, a negative one. Yet, from day to day, you really don't sit there and stare at the computer screen and think, I'm so grateful for the internet. Thank you, internet, for being here. You don't do that. You turn on the computer and you get to business. Yet, the internet is there. And when it's not, well, things can turn south pretty fast. With that being said, last week, I realized that. Now, I'm not talking, it didn't happen with the internet or anything. It was a, a different thing. Uh, there's nothing that can be done about it. Uh, but it made me think. We have to appreciate what we have. We have to appreciate things that we care about or things that care about you. Could be anything. Could be personal possession. It could be a job that you like. Could be family and friends. Could be a pet. It could be anything. But what we must do and what we must realize from day to day, and you could literally just think of this every day for you don't even have to think about it at all. You know, just for 30 seconds a week. You don't even have to do that. You know, you could just ignore this. But it's just something that I've realized. And that while I've preached it <laughs> before, if you want to call it that, I haven't thought of it on this level until just now. You just got to realize what's there for you. Sometimes just what you have. Or something that, well, something that cares about you. Something or someone that's there for you. And you have to just realize the importance that this thing or person or anything has in your life. And you've got to think about how life would be different if this thing is gone. And yes, it may sound pessimistic, and it may sound negative, even depressing, if you will. But hopefully, hopefully, if you think of it that way, you will come to realize that not everything is here forever. Not everything is here to stay. And hopefully, in doing so, you will be able to appreciate the smaller things. We must appreciate what we have while it is still there. And we must appreciate the smaller things. We must appreciate what we have. We must appreciate the daily life and everything that is there for us. And if you live life day by day just doing that, I guarantee you, not only will life be better, but you will also be happier. With just a few short words to conclude this. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to do anything different. None of that. Just appreciate what's there for you. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to do anything. Could be anything. Just realize once in a while what you have and how important it is to you. Or how important you are to it. Thank you very much for listening. This is Report of the Week here. And this is just a short lecture of mine entitled Putting an Exclamation Point on Life. Thank you.